this desk. Thank you very much, Riv. We're joined by the bot lane duo of Evil Geniuses, Altec, Crepo. Guys, congrats on the win. So let's start the game uh, with Champ Select. Uh, they ended up putting together a pretty obvious poke comp. Uh, what did you guys sort of identify this, and how did you decide to play around it? Well, we actually had the entire pick and ban phase, or at least the ban phase dropped on a piece of paper. So I'm like, yeah, we prepared for this. It's on the paper. We know what to do like this time. And yeah, well, once they started locking in the, all these poke champs, you generally know like the rest of them are going to follow. And even then, if you didn't know, you could still identify that in-game. A poke comp, you could play different things into it. You just need to identify, one, if you're strong or not in a team fight. Like, if, if they go for an objective, they have to poke. We've made that mistake in the past, just trying to team fight with a poke comp and then you lose. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's not as much as seeing it coming, it's just knowing how to play around it. And you guys did really well. So, uh, speaking more of champ select, Altec, you've been playing a lot of Corky. You seem to be one of the only AD carries that keeps going back to him. Why is this a champion for you? Uh, when Twitch and uh, Lucian are banned, like, those are like the top two ADs right now. So, I'm generally more comfortable on just picking Corky when those two are picked or banned. Is there something that he brings to a team that you have to work around? Uh, he brings a lot of poke and wave clear. If we don't have wave clear, then Corky is a pretty good pick. Okay. Crap, would you have anything to add on that? Yeah, he had a, a little more wave clear than, say, a Graze would have, for example. Uh, I mean, Graze has got to get a little closer to get that wave clear. He had a, a lot of safe wave clear. He's a little more mobile because his, his Valkyrie goes a little longer, and he can actually help burst the spell shields down. If you're looking to siege and they spell shield up, he can actually poke that down. Uh, I just like playing with, with, with his Corky. goes really well most of the time. Uh, better than his Kog'Maw so far. <laughs> uh, what, what's the Kog'Maw stories? Well, we just lost lane, so like you. That's all. Uh, okay. So speaking of you guys playing together, of course, you guys have only been, um, I guess, playing together for now, like, barely more than a week here. How's uh, the synergy going with you guys? Yeah, Johnny. How's it going? It's uh, going pretty good. There are just um, some little uh, communication errors that we tend to have not fixed yet, but overall, like, in the next few weeks, it should be cleaned up. Did your styles kind of initially mesh, or are you kind of working out how you want to play the lane together? Uh, we're trying to work it out still, but it'll get there. Okay. Yeah, from my side, uh, well, obviously, last split, we didn't have the greatest bot lane in the world. And sure. even though uh, we replaced Yellow Pleat, that doesn't mean that Yellow Pleat was the only problem. Uh, clearly, there must be something I was doing wrong. So I'm just trying not to uh, mold Altec in a second form, like saying, like, you need to do this, you need to do I want him to just tell me, you're screwing up. Like you should do this differently and differently, and then, and it's working. Like we're just trying to give a, uh, we just solutions to certain problems and see if we agree on the solution or not. And we're just trying to play as much as we can. Uh, he's still in school, so after his school hours, we try to do a queue as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And it's getting there. I'm I'm getting more confident every week just in our laning ability. Well, it's good to hear. So actually, speaking of your laning ability, you guys actually had a battle down in the bot lane under the turret. It's pretty hectic. If we can get bot the lane party. Yeah, it was a bit of a party, uh, a brawl as the guys just called it. Uh, if when you guys want to walk me through this. Uh, interesting fight. Well, it's like mid-game, so we're trying to open up on towers. So um, Snoopy initially called that he wants to roam down, I think, uh, with Pobelter and Lul and just start sieging this tower. But I feel I feel they had TP up on us, and we didn't. So it ended up going a little longer. If we roll the clip, then I might be able to remember. So I go for the hook. Obviously, I miss. We see Babadup's getting caught, though, so we initiate on him. It's all good and dandy here. I feel this is where half of us want to back up, and Snoopy's like, calling, nah, we can go in, we can go in, we can get them, we can get them. We're chasing. I'm at the other end of the tower having my lantern ready, and now like their backup's coming in, so it gets a little iffy. And this is just where your, your solo queue mind kicks in. I mean, you can call turns, like we turn on Mundo right here, I believe, and we try to burst him down, but this is, this is why you play a lot of solo queue, these situations, because they're so erratic and unpredictable that you just need to try to dodge skill shots. I almost had my lantern up there, so I would've lived if I had like one more second. But I feel like we played this all right. Tyson came in in time. Like We got the backup, we're playing these team fight comms, no longer super split comms. And, and that, that's just the power of Shivana as well. You see, she can just come in late, jump over a wall, get really tanky, and, and try and turn that around. I feel we could have played this a little better than we ended up doing, but uh, I was happy that we were going for these confident plays. You know, we weren't too afraid to commit to this. And even if they go wrong, so be it, and, and try and adapt. And then I, I like the outcome of it. Yeah, you guys obviously won the game. Were you more confident because Complex is running with a sub? Were they weaker than they normally are? It it helps. Um, I mean. I think Man Cloud is a really, really good player, but obviously if you only have one week, we know how it feels to play yeah, of only one week with new players, and there's going to be certain tendencies that, uh, yeah, that you just can't rely on yet. Okay, so I actually want to go back and talk about the, the sort of the new bot lane you guys have, because you posted that you were holding open tryouts. Of course, Altec, you were one of them. Um, how, what was the tryout process like? like what, do you, what did you get tested on? Like, how, how was that whole process? Uh, just like laning, like mistakes and whatnot, and rotations if like I could make calls in lane and stuff. It's like, hey, Crepo, don't do this, do that. 
So tell Carpo what to do all the time. As yeah, long as you're always right. Get, get more of a vocal uh, AD carry out there. Because I, I, I really like when Altic just tells me what to do. Because I, I feel after playing so long, I'm going to get making these mistakes over and over that I just don't see anymore. And I really, really, we need like either an analyst or somebody else to come in and say like, hey, I see you're doing this pattern. Stop doing that. And I think Johnny can get there for sure. Like he understands the game really well. So we'll get there. Cool. Yeah, and you guys are obviously doing really well. This is a good, this is a good win here on this one. Um, so then uh, one final question for you, Altec. Um, you played with Cloud9 Tempest. Of course, you guys did fall short in the promo tournament. Um, what was the road like where you're like, crap, we almost made LCS, and then you're back into it? Like, what was, what was that sort of like month span? Uh, when we lost to EG, I was like, damn, this is like pretty depressing, but... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but afterwards, um, I was, basically I went through the trial process, and I'm like, oh, sweet. And I'm also glad that Glebe um, made TSM too. Yeah, so you guys, uh, you've already fought each other once, you'll fight three more times. Extra special, extra special rivalry when you fight TSM? Uh, yeah. Gotta beat him up. Definitely want to win. All right, so tomorrow, final question for you guys. You guys fight Curse. Curse is half a game up on you. Um, how's that battle gonna go? Uh, I think we're pretty confident. We just um, have to like nail stuff down, you know, make sure everyone's on the same page. But overall, we have like a general idea going to tomorrow. Krepo? Yeah, coming, uh, I think that their popular teams are getting on stage right now. Coming out, because <laughs> that's not for me. Um, coming out of the, the first week, we expected Curse to do really well, because they were doing well in scrims, and they, they seemed confident, but they just had a, something go wrong every game. You know, I, mean, I still remember the CLG game they played, they just got caught level one, walk into lane, and that just kind of set the tone for that game. Mm -hmm. So I feel their, their morale will be a little lower, and they've already exposed some of their, uh, their comfort picks already, so we hope to learn from week one, and... We're getting better. Hopefully, they're getting morale's a little down after a disappointing uh, week one, and then just hope to capitalize on that. All right. Well, guys, congratulations on your win. Thank you so much for your time. Krepo, I will always cheer for you. Yes, thank just, you. Just see you now, because you like puns, and that makes me happy. Uh, guys, anyway, thank you again very much for your time. Good luck tomorrow. But we've got more games going on. Going to take a quick break, which means you have three and a half minutes before we jump into our next game, which is LMQ versus Dignitas. And with only one game separating the teams, you're not going to want to miss this. We'll be right back. <laughs>